Ladies and gentlemen, stick around. We've got Ideas by Elliot. Hey, folks, you're listening to Ideas by Elliot. And we're here with Ideas by Elliot. Podcast, podcast, <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I am here with Jim Ritterbush. You are running for Green Bay City Council, District 9. Tell me about that. Yeah, I'm running for District 9 against Guy Zima, and there's a couple other candidates in the primary, so hoping to make it through the primary to uh, be the be the candidate against whoever. Maybe somebody will knock him out, and it'll be two of us good progressive people. But uh, I just want to make change in the city, show uh, people that you can sit down at the table and negotiate in good faith and be professional and i want to do things to help my community better be a better place to live work and play you're involved with some of the neighborhood associations yes i'm president of the marquette park neighborhood association so i've been that for five years Uh, do a lot of work with the city you know people do call neighborhood association presidents with problems and you know you pretty much handle them just like an alderman pass them on to the proper departments that uh, that they need to be dealt with so uh yeah i just i want to i want to get involved you're telling me about uh labor union involvement my full-time job is i'm a labor labor liaison at uh, jbs most people know it as packer line packing i uh, worked there on the floor cutting meat for 22 years i was a union representative union steward for 20 out of the 22 uh, then I went to work uh, for the United Food and Commercial Workers, uh, Local 1473, uh, out of Milwaukee. I worked out of my house here in Green Bay. Traveled the state representing mostly grocery workers. And then, uh, unfortunately, due to our lovely union climate in the state of Wisconsin, I uh, lost my position with the local union, and then they negotiated me a job back at uh, JBS as a labor rep in the plant. So. I, uh, my day job is basically going around and helping people make sure they're paid right, treated right, and work safely. I've heard people talk about age in, in the race. Talk about that a little bit. You know, I'm 53. I've lived in Green Bay my whole life. I know the, you know, age doesn't really matter, but I just think that I have a lot more knowledge of what's going on in the city for living in the city for uh, 52, 53 years. So some of the new people that are coming up, they're younger. And of course, Zuma's 70. Yeah, he's like 70. I'm 41 and he's been alderman, except for yep. the short little stint, like pretty much the whole time. <laughs> yep. Two years. Well, he lost He lost two years. Uh, the term before this one, he had lost to uh, James Warner. And then he decided not to run. And that was kind of a messed up deal. His wife ran and then nobody campaigned. And then Zimmer ran again and then he won again. So. You mentioned off the air something about the code of conduct. Tell me your thoughts on that. Well, I just, you know, I think it's really unnecessary that our tax dollars have to be spent to uh, negotiate a code of conduct policy. I mean, we're grown adults here. You know, I'm a labor union guy. Yeah, but, you know, we I've negotiated contracts with big companies all over the state of Wisconsin. And when you go to the table, you just handle yourself in a professional manner. Yeah. You know, there's times when you want to tell them, the, you know, flip them the bird and tell them to, you know, F off. But, you know, you, you don't do that. You you got to handle yourself in a professional manner. And I think I can do that. I know the mayor kind of feeds on Zimo sometimes. They feed one another. But you, you can't do that. You know, you're in the public eye. You need to handle yourself in a professional manner. So you think people should handle themselves professionally, but you are not in favor of having a code of conduct. Oh, I just don't think it's necessary, you know, to to have to negotiate something like that, you know, wasting tax dollars, negotiating something like that is just ridiculous. I mean, you know, get along. But now that it's it's all done, right? Yeah, it's all done. So, I mean, it's there. It's there. Talk to Randy Scannell about that. He was one of the architects of, yep. of, of drafting that. He had some interesting opinions on that because they have a review board if there's a complaint. Most of the people on there are citizens. They're not on council. So it allows some oversight. Well, that's a good thing. I mean, that's, that's a good thing. 
And I'm I'm not trying to convince you one way or the other. I just uh yeah, I thought no, that, I thought it was I just think it was a waste of I mean, I just think sitting back as a citizen watching it go on, it's like really what is what does that what does that send a message to other communities that you know get our local news to see that you know we got this kind of shenanigans going on in city hall that uh, that you have to have a code of conduct. I think most people would agree that to varying degrees that there was some dysfunction there, right? What else do you think was maybe done suboptimally that that you feel that you could offer an improvement on? Well, diversity. I'm uh, I work in a very diverse workforce and I don't think a lot of the different uh diverse people in the community are really being heard or you know being paid attention to in my opinion is you need to get you know you need to get people together and all work together for a common goal so that you know you don't have racism and you don't have people you know talking about building walls and deporting illegal aliens and whatever, you know, we got to work together because we all live in the same community, you know, bring them together and hear their concerns and work together collectively to make it a better place. How would you work to facilitate something like that? Well, first you have to, first you have to get to the, you know, the, the leaders of those different uh, cultures or nationalities and, you know, just sit down and hear what their concerns are. I mean, I deal with predominantly, I deal with uh, Hispanic, the Hispanic community. But, uh, you know, in my workforce, in my workforce, I mean, there's, there's a lot, there's probably six, seven different nationalities that work in the plant that I'm in. And, you know, you got to work together as a union. We work together. We help, you know, help no matter where you're from. You're a worker. You have workers' rights. Just like if you're a citizen, you have rights as a citizen. So you feel that one of the ways that city council came up short in the past was a lack of diversity and a lack of paying attention to the entire community. Is yep, that, is that fair correct. to say? Okay. Yep. And a, any, any other things that you think specifically that they've come up short on or acted wrongly on? Well, of course the, the mayor always likes to uh, cut the firefighters and the police. I don't, uh, every time the budget comes up, that's the, uh, first people he whacks is tries to whack uh, firefighters. You know, we're, we're rated a plus under the standards for fire departments. And why would you want to take that away? What would you cut? If not that, I guess I'd have to look at, you know, you have to look at all the different, uh, different options. I'm, I'm a kind of person that I would rather pay a little bit extra tax to make sure that I have the, services that I need to keep my lifestyle. I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, but you know, I don't mind paying for the things that I have. I don't mind paying to have my garbage picked up and my street plowed. So you think that things are in a good position as far as services that the city is providing, you wouldn't want to cut anything. And if necessary, you'd even look to increase taxes. That's correct. I mean, I'm, I, I wouldn't be shy to, to say that even though voters don't want to hear that, but you know, just like just like everything goes up, you know, you got to pay a dollar extra a year to keep a service and in, intact. Why why wouldn't you not do it? You would definitely be in favor of not going into some sort of unnecessary debt service, though. You'd want to pay for things as you go, right? Right. Oh, I've, oh, absolutely. Yeah, you don't you don't uh, kick the can down the street and worry about paying for it later. What would you say would be some things that city council has done right in your opinion? Well, I know I wasn't really in favor of all the downtown development, you know, being a West sider, I wasn't a real big fan of what they were all doing and spending all the money on downtown. But to be quite honest, I'd like to go down there on Friday nights now with a group of friends during the summer and watch music. And it's, it's kind of fun. You know, I mean, you say I wasn't a big fan of it, but it's actually kind of, Nice to go down there and take your lawn chair and sit around with friends and listen to music. Would you be in favor of additional development or do you think there's enough? I think there needs to be more development on the west side. Downtown is, they, they've they spent enough. They need to move it to the west side. We have some properties over there that could be utilized a lot better. A lot of uh, water frontage that they could uh, develop to make the west side. You'd like to see more right. investment in the Broadway area? Yeah, everywhere from, you know, from Mason Street all the way to Main Street. 
I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of property in there that has potential for, you know, development. What kinds of things have you run into? You're knocking on doors. What kinds of things have been brought up to you that maybe were a little bit surprising to you? Uh, some of the ordinances on fencing. I get stopped by a, an elder lady on Sunday and she invited me in to tell me about the, how her neighbor put a fence up. And it's kind of funny because I had the same situation with my neighbor. Some of the ordinances, the way they are, I mean, you can build a fence right on top of your neighbor's driveway and you can't even get out of your car. But, you know, when, when you call the city to have them look at it, they say, oh, you got to pay to have that surveyed. I just don't think that's right. But yeah, lady called me in and talked to me about it. And then she told me that she had called uh, her alderman, Guy Zimmel, over to look at it. And Guy told her, well, this house should have never been built on this property anyhow. Made her feel real good. <laughs> <laughs> her, her, her property should never have been built. Yeah, the house should have never been built on that. Oh property. well, you know it's here, so uh, yeah, and I'm not moving because <laughs> yeah. it's too close to the neighbor's property. So in that position, what would you do differently? I think you need to change change an ordinance to make sure that neighbors can't build their fence right on top of the property line, so that you can't you know open your door to get out of your vehicle. So, for instance, we had a fence built in our yard, and we didn't know the property line was where it was. And the fence company, they looked it up, and they put it right on the edge, sort of like you're saying. Now, it doesn't impact our neighbors can't open the car door or anything. I don't know how you write that into law. Yeah, I mean, I'm just using that for an instance of what one lady said. You know, she was concerned about that. I don't know how you'd fix that necessarily. And you also mentioned that she had to pay to have it surveyed. And you can see the downside in offering that for free, too, though, right? Right, but that could be abused. If you if you build a property, though, if you build something and they come over to inspect it, you can da damn well be straight. They're gonna they're gonna check out everything on the lot line and find where everything's supposed to be. What have you been doing to campaign so far? You mentioned that there was some sort of a forum tonight. Tonight we had a forum with uh, all the candidates from uh, Alderman District Nine, uh, Alderman District Eight, and uh, County Board. I believe it's nine. And uh, had everybody came up and we give them uh, five minutes to speak, give their pitch and and took a few questions and it went really well. Actually, it was it was very good. All the candidates were there so that the residents of Marquette Park Neighborhood Association could, you know, hear their concerns and see what they had to say. That's the neighborhood association where you're president. That's correct. Yep. So that was put on by the neighborhood association. Yep. You know, you stay neutral. We don't endorse anybody, but bring the candidates in and let them, let them give their spiel. In District 9, there are currently four candidates, right? Yep, that's correct. Would you say there's anything that is of interest to people in District 9 that maybe all four of you agree on? Um, professionality in City Hall. <laughs> the, it goes back to the Code of Conduct. Everybody says they agree on that? Yep, everybody says that uh, everybody needs to handle herself in a professional manner. Was everybody there? Yep. Yep. That's great to hear. Yep. Anything else that all four candidates or even three out of the four candidates all agree on? Um, the, the budget deal where they keep cutting the uh, proposing to cut fire and police. All four candidates, all three candidates, a guy, Sima didn't really talk too much about it, but the the three uh, challengers talked about how they always try to cut the firefighters and the police. I think we all agreed on that, that that's uh, not a good thing. We had some discussion about how they should uh, reopen the number one station downtown. Because if there is some kind of a major fire that happens really fast downtown, where's the fire department coming from all the way over in Allenway? If you don't cut fire and you don't know it necessarily where else to cut, that's one aspect of it. But also, how much money is enough? How do you know that those are not appropriate cuts? Well, I mean, when you're talking cutting, you know, say six six people's jobs, I mean, being a being a union guy, that just doesn't uh, doesn't set well. And then, I mean, he, he always the mayor always proposes it, and then the city council usually fights it, and then they get it thrown out of the budget, and you know, they find find somewhere else to make the cut. But yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't have a number. Yeah, I don't have a number of what it would be. It sounds like you don't actually be in favor of increasing it though, reopening uh, one of the stations. Yep. They need either, either increasing it or reallocate people to different areas. Cause I mean, 
like uh, one of our board members of the neighborhood association is a retired firefighter and he talks about the the Northland Hotel you know they're they're rebuilding this and he said years ago they had a fire there and he was like one of the first guys uh, on the scene he said it looked like a, a nightmare movie where people were all hanging out the windows when they got there because it you know took so long for the fire department to get there you know you gotta look if, you, if you're gonna increase downtown and businesses down there you got to look at the services that are around there to you know help if something happens you mentioned fire and police, but we were talking mostly about fire. Where do you think the police department falls into that? That one, I think he's a little bit lighter on. He doesn't uh, seem to want to cut that as much. But, uh, you know, it's mainly the firefighters is who he's usually after. But he does bring the police. Anything else come up on that forum that you wanted to shed a little more light on? Well, I didn't really uh, didn't really talk about, you know, the stadium tax, what, what we should use it for. and. I know there was some uh, discussion that Guy had talked about. He feels that the stadium uh, tax money should be put back in the hands of the, the taxpayers of uh, Brown County. I, I think I'd agree with some of that, but I'd, I'd like to see some of it used for development to make our city, you know, more attractive to bring, you know, businesses in and, and uh, bring in uh, you know, visitors, not just for Packer games, but, you know, maybe – some kind of an entertainment complex or something where, you know, you bring more people into more people you bring in, the more revenue you make in, in all the businesses. There's been talk of putting a sports facility downtown, maybe like in the Broadway area. I would definitely be in favor of some kind of a sports venue to bring in, you know, concerts, bands, you know, it'd be nice to have something outside in green Bay. You go to, you go to Oshkosh and they have that little, uh, theater on the river there and that, that does real well i mean you get a lot of people to go there you get you know big names bands to come up and it, it is february right now so it's hard to think about right. about going outside and we have an awful lot of weather i would characterize as not being super outdoor concert venue sports venue friendly uh, and you mentioned yourself that, there, that there's already music in the downtown area so do you think that that would be a good use of funds to produce a three-month usage window facility no i mean i think it should be you know some kind of a sports complex that could be used for you know all kinds of different events yeah i'm not just saying like a concert venue no some kind of a sports complex that could be used for you know different multiple sports you think the city should run that well i guess that would have to be up to a city council or whoever's in charge at that time well that'll be you right (laughs) <laughs> oh, I hope. Yeah, I hope so. I guess what I'm going at, like that's another department potentially or another thing that the city has to take on if they're managing that. And if they're not managing that, then are we having the city foot the bill for something that's being administered by some private entity and potentially profiting on that? No, I think park departments does a good job running, run the parks around here. I believe that they could, you know, they could manage it. So you'd be in favor of a sports complex that the parks department would manage? Yep. Yep, absolutely. You've had some experience with the neighborhood associations. What has been your personal experience with city council and city government? Well, you know, working through the neighborhood associations, you get people that come up with uh, complaints or suggestions, and you just kind of feed them into your to your alder person or you know to the mayor, whoever you know whoever is in charge of that department, or you know park department if you have a problem. You know, you funnel them, funnel them to the departments of where the issue's at. Give me a little bit of your pitch. When people go to the voting booth, what do you want them to think about? I would, I would say, uh, you know, lifelong resident, uh, 40 years in the district, been involved with, uh, you know, the city through neighborhood association. Uh, also, you know, I was very instrumental in the Colburn Park uh, fundraising, uh, help, you know, help through that. I'm not a guy that likes to take all the credit. I just, I have a good heart and I want to help people. And I think with my, my years of experience, you know, life experience, you know, I'm not a college graduate by any means, but uh, I went to the school of hard knocks and I think that I could uh, definitely make a difference in, in my community. And I take pride in what I do. And I want to make sure that someday when I leave this earth, I can, know that I made a a difference in my community and made a better place to live.
How would you characterize success when election time comes around next time and you're the incumbent? What would you like to hang your hat on? What would you? Th- what do you think your your successes will be? Um, community involvement, neighborhoods, working with neighborhoods to, uh, you know, bring people together. Like I said before, you know, the the diversity in our city is has changed a lot since I was a kid here, and I think uh, I think I could bring that to bring those uh, different. Uh, uh, nationalities together and make it a better place for everybody so that they're comfortable living here. Do you have any thoughts on specifically how you would go about doing that? I was involved with uh, St. Willowbrod's Church for a while, and we had a, uh, it's called the Immigration Task Force is what it was called, a little group. We had uh, people from labor. We had people from, uh, I should say, I was the representative of labor. We had people from uh, different churches. Uh, we had people from um, uh, family services. And, you know, some were bilingual, some like myself. I mean, I speak a little bit of Spanish, but not enough to get by. But what we did is we came together to uh, talk about issues in the community that, you know, what, we, what can we do to keep the Latino population educated on uh Say the, say the plant gets raided and they pick somebody up and they take them away. Most of the times when that happens, uh, nobody knows where they went. So, and actually we had the sheriff's department involved in that organization also too. So if INS comes in and they make a raid, at least we can notify the family of where the individual was taken, you know, whether it be Wapan or wherever. So we actually, uh, created a, a cell phone a hotline so that if somebody had a problem, they could call that hotline. And if they needed something with labor, you know, say they worked at uh, Packerland or JBS and they had a question, they could call that phone. And then that, that was funneled to whoever, you know, handled that, uh, that area. So, you know, you could do that same thing with any nationality, but I think bringing people together in a, in a group and just discussing about what their concerns are in the community would be a, a huge asset to the city. This specific race, the city council race, is nonpartisan. Would you classify yourself as a nonpartisan person and, and to people who maybe differ from you politically, how would you garner their vote? Well, it's just like just like organized labor when you're dealing with a corporation and a union, you know, you gotta you gotta give and take between no matter what your party is. It doesn't matter. You have to you have to negotiate and you have to come to a, come to a solution. You don't win every battle, but you know, you, you try to win them all, but you got to give and take. You mentioned a few times that you've been on the side of the union labor. So it, when you're in city council, your management. Well, you listen to the, you listen to con- your constituents, you know, that's the, that's the thing that, that people need to know is they need to contact their constituents and let them know how they feel. And you vote, you vote the way your constituents want. You don't really vote based on what your personal needs are. It's about the people. We the people. <laughs> Would you want to be involved in the negotiations with unions that are involved with the city at all? Absolutely. Well, I mean, you you have to listen to both sides of the both sides, and it all comes down to the dollar and cents. And you know, you make sure that you're getting your be- the best bang for the buck, but you're treating people in a fair and equitable way. You're going out, you're knocking on doors. Have you had a good response? Yeah, I mean, everybody seems pretty positive. You know, you introduce yourself, you tell them who you're running against, uh, who the incumbent is, and they just all go, oh, yeah, oh, we know him. And, and that's, you know, there are a few positive people about it, but it's like, yeah, 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 he needs to go. And I just tell them that you, guy, guys, you're, you're alderman right now. I, I want to be the new Jim and get rid of the guy. <laughs> Were you surprised that you have as much competition in this election? Well, not really. Not really. I mean, I, I kind of made up my mind right around Christmas time. It's like, should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? Shouldn't I do it? Shouldn't I do it? And, you know, I had a couple uh, couple people on uh, county board talking to me about either running for that or whatever. And then I decided to pull the trigger. And then, of course, I get the phone call from the local tv station saying oh yeah somebody says you're recruited by the mayor and it's like uh no they got the wrong guy 
that's not this guy. This this guy is uh, doing it on his own. So you were interviewed by some of the TV stations? Yeah, WBAY. Any closing thought? No, I'm just uh, I'm just hoping that uh, you know the people of District Nine will give me a chance to uh, represent them. I will, uh, you know, give give my best, put my best foot forward to, uh, you know, listen to the citizens and do uh, what they say, not what I want. It's about uh, what the people want, and uh, you know, bring the diversity together. Uh, be professional. You know, we're grown adults. We don't need to be cussing and swearing at one another in front of the whole world and TV. Uh, I guess that's about it. I mean, with my experience, life experience, I think I can, I could be a good alderman for the city of Green Bay and make our place, a, uh, make our community a better place to live. As we're recording this, it's February 10th. It's 10, 17 p.m. on my clock. I know you work early morning, so I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to do this. I'm going to try to have this uh, published and out to everybody uh, February 11th or February 12th, so, you know, before the weekend, hopefully. Okay. Voting day for the primary, which is uh, why we wanted to fit this in, is yep. on Tuesday, February 16th. That is correct. I will be knocking doors Saturday and Sunday and probably making lots of phone calls on Monday. Get out and vote. I mean, no matter who you who you support, do what you are, what you have the right to do, and that's to get out and vote. If anybody wants any further information on you, your campaign, what your thoughts are, how would you like them to get a hold of you? Um, I do have a Facebook page. Otherwise, they could email me at uh, Ritter. That's R I D D E R ten fifty four at yahoo dot com. Jim Ritterbush, I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to do this. Don't forget to run over to iTunes and Stitcher and give a rating and review of the show. It helps other people find us. Cheers.